Back. Well, this is great. Just as the dragon spawns, we uh, DC out of the map. That's exactly what you want, right? All right, let's see. All right, I'm loading the game back up. Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what happened to my internet. Though. That hasn't happened for a while, as you all know. Loading up. <laughs> Arena Net, how dare you talk crap about our game kicked? I don't know whether it's talking crap. It's just, uh, you know. Or maybe it is a little. I don't know. Someone said they sold my spot. Yeah, if we're not in Dragonstown, yeah, we're not. It remains empty. I'm pretty disappointed with that, to be honest. All right, I'll, I'll swap the overlay again. I, yeah, I'm really disappointed with this, actually. Join on Guild of Sea sucks. The guy says, he, he I stole his spot, oops. I'll try a few times, but it's, it, I, I think it's going to happen, guys. I think it's going to happen. All right. Well, so here, we'll do something fun. We'll do something fun. I'm, I'm gonna, ugh, I got to do that again. That means we may have another stream of Dragon Sand. I'm sorry that it's boring your hats off, but that's great. All right. Okay. So what we're gonna do, guys? I've, I have just finished rendering an episode of Guild Wars: Your Mastermind. Who would like to try it live on Twitch chat? Could be fun, right? So give, give me, uh, give me a second. All right, there we go. Of course, sharing this to all of you guys now is going to make it even less watched on YouTube. But we'll, 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 we'll roll with it. Okay. We'll roll with it. Close that down. Close that down. Open that up. All right. <clears throat> Okay. All right. So, this is Mastermind, guys. You'll still be with me live. I'll, I'll pause the video and stuff as we go along. Uh, you'll still be with me live, but you're gonna be here. You're gonna be watching the video. So we're gonna we're gonna see what you guys think with each question. We're gonna pause it and do it like kind of a, a weird live version, okay? And then I'll tell you the answers after each section. All right. So here we go. Or uh, hmm. How yeah, so make sure you keep your own stuff. You, you you write down your own scores. So get a little notepad up, get something up. And here we go. Guild Wars 2 Mastermind, baby. I just realized I'm not playing you properly at audio. There we go. Let's go again. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Guild Wars 2 Mastermind. So I've been gathering some pretty awesome questions over the past couple of months since the previous episode of Mastermind. You guys enjoyed it so much, I figured we'd do another quiz. So what is this? This is your chance to test how much you know about the game, and particularly to put your wits up against mine. So I have devised a quiz that is composed of 40 questions. We've got 10 really easy ones that even complete noobs to the game should be able to answer. 10 normal ones, then 10 hard ones, and finally 10 ultra hard ones. At the end of the quiz, you'll get a score and you'll get to be able to determine just how good you are. So this is the ranking system. If you get anywhere between 0 and 40 points, you're a novice. Next, you're a veteran with 41 to 60 points. You're an elite at 61 to 80. A champion at 81 to 100. Legendary rank at 101 to 120. And if you get almost all the questions correct and get all the points, you'll be Trahan level. So play along, guys. I'm going to ask you a question. You can feel free to pause the video if you need more time to answer it. And just jot down, if you're at the PC, you know, on a notepad or something, what you think the answer is to each question, either one, two, three, or four, and move on to the next question. should only take about 10 minutes or so. 
and then I'll go through the answers for you guys. Best of luck, and unlike in the previous quid, there's basically no Guild Wars 1 stuff here at all. Or spoilers, for what it's worth. Alright, so moving on, let's go for the easy questions. Now, like I say, these are very easy, just to warm you up, get you uh, a little bit of confidence here. So, question one. Players of Guild Wars 2 use what exactly to move around the game world quickly? Is it one, outposts, two, waypoints, three, merchants, or four, mounts? Alright, okay guys, so make sure you write it down. You can consult with Twitch chat, Twitch chat on this very difficult starting question. It's okay if you don't know it. Alright? So make sure you, you got your little thing down. And uh, and write your answer as one, two, or th one, two, three, or four. Okay? Alright. Alright. Should wait, how should we do this? Should we confirm it? I don't know. Alright, alright. Let's move on. Alright, question two. Which condition of these hits the hardest? Is it one, burning, two, bleeding, three, chill, or four, poison? Very difficult question here as well. I, I wanted to put fear on there as well, but I thought that would make it too too difficult for people. So, uh, so yeah, which one? Answer is always C, apparently. All right. Which one? I can see some of you are getting it correct here. Chill, chill. Lots of people saying chill. Yeah, okay. Moving quickly on to question three. Which crafting discipline cannot be pushed to level 500? Which of these cannot go that high? Is it weaponsmith, armorsmith, artificing, or scribing? All right. Uh, and so for this one, hold on. I'm just going to close out Guild Wars 2 here. Scribing. Scribing says Kazra's DK. I don't know, man. I've never got my weapon smith that Question high. Four. How many racial skills do Guild Wars 2 characters get a hold of? On any one character, how many racial skills? Is it two racial skills? Six? Ten? Or fifteen? Anybody who's been watching the channel recently should know this one. How many racial skills? Two, six, ten, fifteen. Question five. Minister Cordicus's second name is... What? Is it... Beetlestone, Demi, Arton, or Cordicus? Ooh, this is actually probably the trickiest one. Ooh, I don't know about this one, guys. I don't know about this one. Question six. At the release of Heart of Thorns, which of these was not a graphics option? Was it full screen, an FOV slider, ambient occlusion, or colorblind mode? I like this one. This is cheeky. A lot of you guys in chat are going to know that one instantly. But I think it will panic some people. I don't know. Complete noobs. Question seven. Which of the following is an elite specialization? Is it Oracle? Paragon? Herald? Or Assassin? Ah, this one's very difficult. I remember, I remember one of these I thought was going to be in the game and then it never was in the end. Question eight. Which boon significantly allows you to dodge more often? Is it swiftness, vigor, regeneration, or might? All right, pay attention to the word here, significantly, okay? I don't need anyone being some smart ass, all right? Significantly, all right? Question nine. A Guild Wars 2 signet is what exactly? It is a weapon skill? An ability that costs no energy, has an active and a passive, or is always instant activation. And lastly, for the easy questions, number 10. Free-to-play accounts cannot do what? They cannot reach level 80, they cannot play any of the story, they cannot enter the PvP game modes, or they cannot transfer gold into gems. Alright, so nice, smooth sailing. Hopefully we're all doing pretty good at the moment. I do think that this quiz will get harder than the previous one. And uh, we're going to ramp into it here. So for the normal questions, your average Guild Wars 2 player should uh, be able to peg these. But it's going to get your brain moving. So normal questions uh, are worth two points each for a correct answer. The easy questions were worth just one point. These ones are worth double that. So here we go. Question one. Which of these is not a skill? Is it prayer to Cormir, prayer to Melandru, 
prayer to Lissa or prayer to Dwayna. All right, now you got to be more careful now, guys. All right, because I'm going to start catching you out with stuff. All right. So remember, you're now so in the normal ones. Now you're gonna these are gonna be worth two points each when we did, when we figure out what's 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 good and what's not. Okay. Question two: How many targets does Conjure Fiery Greatsword Skill Five Firestorm hit? How many targets? Is it ten, five, three, or one? All right. Pretty basic question here. I'm gonna pause it a little bit. I like seeing your responses now. Pretty good. I like seeing them because now, now the questions get a little bit harder. It's less trolling. Which one is correct here, guys? All right, let's move on. Question three. Poison will actually reduce resurrection speed by how much? Is it 20%? 30%? 33%? Or not at all? Now, pay close attention here to the question. This is about resurrection speed. Okay? Alright. Don't worry, Da Foom Foom. You might be a noob, but you'll get some of these. You'll be alright. Don't worry. Keep it going. Question four. Where is King Zoran from? Is he from Cantha, Elona, Kryta, or Or? Mm. Now, through process of elimination, one of these is very easy to get rid of. They're very, very, very easy. But, uh, but some of them are a little bit tricky as well. All right. So, let's move on. Question five. The first big update to Guild Wars 2 was what exactly? Flame and Frost, Halloween, South Sun Cove, or Winter's Day? Question six. Master of Overkill completes at what point? Master of Overkill is an achievement for doing a massive amount of damage to an enemy. Does it complete at 50,000 damage? 100,000 damage, 200,000 damage, or a whopping 300,000 damage. Question seven. The oh, wait, 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 wait. There we go. All right, I'm going to pause because we never managed to pause. Flame and Frost wasn't big update. <laughs> wow. All right. Looks like you guys are doing okay so far. So far, you're getting the majority right. 1,000 damage, 200,000 damage, or a whopping 300,000 damage. Question seven. The Itzel and Nuhok, Hylic, worship a deity known as Melandru, Armayali, the Sun, or Quetzal. Uh, the pronunciation there is supposed to be Quetzal. No. Question. Uh, and for what it's worth, everyone joking about Flame and Frost. Flame and Frost was not actually the very first update. Flame and Frost is a term that describes multiple updates. So, uh, <laughs> Eight. How many ranger pets exist in the game currently? Is it 20, 30, 40, or 50? Ooh, what do we think here? 20, 30, 40, or 50 ranger pets? Curious. Very curious. Give you guys some time to write it down. Tally, how you doing? Question nine. Which of these is not a type of trait? Master, major, adept, or novice? Again, here we go. This one, again, should do a bit of thinking. You should be okay with it. But could, could quite easily trip you up. Could quite easily. And lastly, question 10 for the normal questions. Guild Wars 2 runs on what exactly? Is it DirectX 9, DirectX 10, DirectX 11, or OpenGL? This is the one, this again is a bit like the uh, the colorblind mode one. <laughs> All right, there we go. There you go. So the, the, those, are the, those are the two kind of, you know, child's play sections done. All right, so there you go, guys. Hopefully some of those will have been really tolerable. Depends when you started playing the game, I suppose. Uh, but let's move on to the hard ones. Now, we're really going to amp up here. Um, and best of luck before we get to ultra hard. The hard questions are each worth four points. So these are double what the normal questions were worth. Four points each. Here we go. What was the name of your father as a char character? Ooh. Was it one, Primus Grave Pelt? Two, Argus Fool Killer? Three, Crusader Dark Tooth? Or four, Fartak Shatterfiend.
Hmm. No Wikian, people. What's the name of your father? Who is the name of your father? Okay, yes, there may be more than one, but it depends entirely on, on of the options. Uh, Fingerlight said, after the video, can you explain how you came up with the names? Every single name you see here is a... I didn't come up with these. These are all Char characters, all of them. Question two. What strength, statistically, are your PvP weapons equivalent to? Are they level 78 exotics? Level 80 exotics? Level 80 ascended? Or level 80 rare? Huh. Weird question. Some of you who are very into the mechanics might know this. Seems pretty obvious, right? Question three. Which of these is not a Guild Wars 2 damage type? Is it physical, fire, choking, or slashing? Hmm, I'll give you guys a, a second more on that because I didn't give you very long. Which of these is not a Guild Wars 2 damage type? Physical, fire, choke. So three of them are damage types. Fire, choking, or slashing? Question four. Which character have the devs joked that they use frequently for size comparisons? Is it Aester Galkin, Logan Thackeray, Lady Kazmir, or Tiny? This is amazing. Look at you guys in chat. It's amazing. You guys are going to enjoy the answers. Oh my god. All right. Question five. What happened to your sister as a human character? Did she join the vigil? Stay in your home instance forevermore. Die or go missing. Easy one if you've been watching the streams. Easy one. Question six. How much does Garm weigh? Is it 130 pounds? 180 pounds? 200 pounds? Or 280 pounds? Again, sorry, I went by a bit quick. Am I a noob if I don't know any of these names, said Glassy Ducky? A little bit. If you don't know any of the ones from that question. But yeah, okay. So how much does Garm weigh? Uh, this might seem weird, but there is actual law absolutely 100% defining how much he weighs. How much does Garm weigh? Is it 130 pounds? 180 pounds? 200 pounds? Or 280 pounds? Question seven. Which weapon type has the most skins? Is it the focus, the greatsword, the shield, or the dagger? Okay, the pounds thing, guys, right? It shouldn't matter whether it's pounds or kilograms, all right? This isn't for you to guess approximately. This is for you to know how much he weighs. And in the lore, it's given in pounds, so I'm giving it in pounds too. I'm not going to randomly add kg in there and stuff as well, no. You should have used that question in stone. No, I'm not going to change that. All right, which weapon type has the most skins? Ah, this is amazing. Looking at the responses. All right. Question eight. What color does the magic find bar change to when you max it out? Does it turn yellow, green, blue, or white? I like this question. It's one of those ones where you're like, ah, oh, that should be on the tip of my tongue. You should know it, but do you? Question nine. In which dungeon does the character Zodja appear without her headdress on? Is it Crucible of Eternity, Corticus's Manor, Ara, or Sorrow's Embrace? Oof. Tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. So what you want to do here, these are all dungeons she appears in. What you do want to do is you want to think about the cutscenes. And lastly, for the hard questions, question 10. The Chinese release date for Heart of Thorns was when? October 23rd? November 1st? November 20th, or it hasn't actually been released in 2015. All right, so hopefully you guys did good there. Those are the hard questions. You're now moving on into Ultra Hard. Ultra Hard are designed to be some of the most difficult, ridiculous, specific pieces of trivia you can know about Guild Wars 2. This is just a small selection of 10 of them. 
Let's see if you get them. And if you are good enough to get these answers, they are worth six points instead of the hard questions, which were just worth four. I need ten questions left of the quiz. Best of luck, guys. You'll need it. Question one. Which of these was not considered as a potential alliance for Scarlet Briar? Did she not consider the Lagos and Tengu? The Kodan and Lagos? The Centaurs with the Hylek? Or the Etins and the Inquest? Yeah, it's worth 60 points in total for the entire thing. Six points each. Did I say, did I, did I say on that previous one, one of my answers was before 2015 or 2014? Let me go back, guys. Two, this is just a small selection of 10. Now moving on into October 23rd, November 1st. No, no, I said 2015. You guys in chat are worrying me that I'm being a moron. All right, here we go. We're going back. Question one. Which of these was not considered as a potential alliance for Scarlet Briar? Did she not consider the Lagos and Tengu, the Kodan and Lagos, the Centaurs with the Hylek, or the Etins and the Inquest? Question two. Which weapon type has the least amount of skins in the game? Is it the Trident, the Focus, the Spear Gun, or the Torch? Uh, I didn't give you guys very long on that one, but uh, Trident, Focus, Spear Gun, Torch. Least skins. Question three. Balthazar's hounds are known as what? Is it Shadowclaw and Custos, Adelaide and Spine, Tamar and Tagun, or Greyclaw and Shadowclaw? Again, frequent watchers of the stream will know this very comfortably. This one here. But your average Guild of Two player who will be watching this on YouTube will not necessarily. Question four. Where do you encounter grave spawn grubs? Is it the Straits of Devastation? Uh, a Restless just joked woof and woofer. I actually had uh, on original version, one of them was Raver and Rex. And I was like, what? It's not. No, don't do Raver and Rex. <laughs> Fingerlight said, I never miss a stream. I don't know this. Dude, I've mentioned this on three different streams. Moving on. The Gendaran Fields, the Temple of the Forgotten Gods, or a raw story mode. All right, where do you find grave spawn grubs? Again, stream based, you'd know. Question five: Which of the following does not exist in Guild Wars Two? Is it a giant chief? Is it a lesser bladed attic? A greater bladed attic? Or a simple sandworm? Yeah, I think most of the comments in this video are going to be about my pronunciation. That I can't remember if it's at K or at Che, or I think it's at Che, but whatever. I don't care. Which doesn't exist? Question six. The Jaws of Oblivion is also known as what? Prangma, Sloven Pitch, Bola Crossing, or Maelstrom's Core? Ah, who was here very early yesterday's stream? Ooh. Question seven. Which of the following is not a skill? Is it boy or buoy, as Americans would say? Water fist, death curse, or conceal the depths? This is actually, we already had this question. In easy, we had it for humans. We had which is not a skill. This again is which is not a skill. Three of them are, one of them isn't. Which one isn't a skill? Question eight. The Orion Fire Eater is most similar to a what? Gargoyle, Drake, Abomination, or Risen Knight? All right, yes, Americans do say buoy. It's weird. It's a boy, but yes. All right, uh, the Orion Fire Eater. So first you have to know what that even is. And then what is it most similar to? What is it classified in the game engine? Question nine. Which of the following is not a packed vessel to have crashed over Verdant Brink? Was it Thunder Break, Farron's Flyer, Plains of Gogolhain, or White Bear's Pride? Hmm. Remember, this is in the ultra-hard category, this one here. 
Why? Okay. And then lastly. And lastly, question 10. Identify the odd one out. Extraction complete. Memories in your hand. Please follow me to the exit. Bat Wrangler. I left the most cruel one for last. Wind potatoes say aluminium. There you go. You know the game's shit when people watch a stream for a Q&A show. Get out, bro. Alright. Alright. There we go, guys. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you've listed down your answers. Uh, if you guessed, alright, and I know some of you will have guessed, alright, just consider... Maybe don't give yourself a point for that one. Because it was a guess if you get it right. But here we go. We're going to go through the answers this time. Um, again, good luck, everybody. And uh, hopefully you found some of those okay. I'll explain the thinking behind some of them. So, uh, first of all, way back down to the easy questions. We're now in the answers round. I'll tell you guys uh, what we have. So, number one was players of Guild Wars to use what to move around the game world. Well, this was option two, waypoints. If you got that correct, give yourself a point. So, one point for each of these, okay? So, just give yourself a tick and one point. Question two, which condition hits the hardest? Well, that, of course, was burning, option one. Uh, question three, which crafting discipline you can't you push to 500? Again, very simple. This is the newest one scribing. This actually caps out at 400, so that's option four. Uh, the fourth question, how many racial skills do we get as Guild Wars 2 characters? The most appropriate answer here is six. Uh, Ten and fifteen are way too high. Two is way too low. Question five, Minister Cordicus's second name is what? Uh, you might have been tempted to say Cordicus. He's Minister Cordicus, right? No, but he's Lord Minister Cordicus Beetlestone. Demi is actually his daughter's name, which may have thrown you off. And Artin is also another another prominent minister who was working with Cordicus during the personal story. Question six. At the release of Heart of Thorns, which of these was not a graphics option? Well, of course, it was colorblind mode. You might have been a little concerned when you saw stuff like the FOV slider and ambient occlusion, which are new options. But colorblind mode still is not a thing to this day. Question seven, which of the following is an elite specialization? Uh, well, as much as I'd love the Paragon, the Oracle, and the Assassin to be elite specializations, the only one here is the Herald, that being option three. Question eight was, which boon significantly will allow you to dodge more often? I deliberately added the word significantly in there to uh, avoid confusion with people, uh, but it's Vigor. So option two, Vigor allows you to dodge more often. Question 9. Uh, a Guild Wars 2 Signet does what exactly? Well, this is a skill that has both an active and a passive. And so that's option 3. And then the final easy question was that what free-to-play accounts cannot do. And they can reach level 80. They can play all the story. They can do PvP. The only thing they cannot do is transfer in-game gold to gems. They're a free-to-play player, so we really not got to get their money somehow, right? All right, there you go, guys. Who's at 10 out of 10? 100% so far. Good stuff. Good stuff. Should be at 10 out of 10 by now, guys. But uh, in the end, these are just 10 measly little points. But you're well on track for Traherne level if you're still at 10 out of 10. All right, moving on to the next section. I would expect everyone watching me actively to get 10 out of 10 so far. Let's see if you're going to be at 20 out of 20 soon. Uh, sorry to hear about the 9 out of 10s, guys. Sorry about that. All right, here we go. All right, moving on. So we've got the normal questions now. Again, these ones are worth two points. So give yourself two points every time you get one of these correct. So, which of these was not a skill? Was it prayer to Cormir, prayer to Melandru, prayer to Lissa, or prayer to Duena? The answer is actually prayer to Melandru. Now, yes, humans do get a skill that allows them to invoke the powers of Melandru, but that is not the name of the skill. The name of the skill is Avatar of Melandru. Prayer to Duena, of course, is your heal, and both Lissa and Cormir are utility skills you can slot. The other outlier here that I could have gone with would have been Avatar of Grenth, by the way. There is no prayer to Grenth. All right, moving on. We've got question two. How many targets does Conjure Fiery Greatsword Skill 5 Firestorm hit? So uh, you had your options here of one target, three, five, or ten. The most common cleaving abilities will go somewhere between three or five. This one actually hits ten. So it is different to the glyph-based utility skills Elementalist can run as well. This will go all the way up to ten. Not that it really counts for very much, but maybe tagging in World vs. World. That one a lot of people got wrong. I know straight away from chat, a lot of people got that wrong. Don't even lie, most of you went five. It's a ten target skill. Question three. Poison will reduce the resurrection speed by how much? 20%, uh, 30%, 33% or not at all. 
Now, you might have gone with not at all because we're talking about resurrection speed here. But now, it should be common knowledge that poison reduces incoming heals. But does it affect resurrects? It actually does. And it affects resurrects the same amount that it affects regular heals. That value is 33%. So this is option three. Uh, question four is, where did King Zoran come from? Where Where is King Zoran from? Uh, this is actually an Orion King. So this was option four. Was your Now, okay, so, so what was easy about this was... Canther doesn't have kings, it has emperors, so you can get rid of Canther straight away. Um, uh, Zoran, though, you do basically have to know the law. Zoran was the king uh, before the... I think he was the father of the king that oversaw the destruction of, of Or. Zoran, I believe, was the... He, or he was the king that dealt with Lady Glaive and the Corsairs. But yeah. So, correct answer. Question five was, what was the first big update to Guild Wars 2? Uh, you might have been tricked out by, say, Flame and Frost here because this is when Living World started. But the game was being updated before the idea of Living World. And its very first big update was Halloween. Question six, Master of Overkill completes at what point? How much damage do we have to do to finish this achievement? Well, it's the very top end of the range. It's 300,000 damage in a single hit. Easily uh, got on an ambient, kind of trivializes the whole achievement in my opinion. But yes, yeah, 300,000. That's option four. The Ito and the New Hawk Hylic worship a deity known as what? This was option two, Amayali. Very, very, very simple question here. Almost too easy. You might have thought Melandru. Uh, just because it's kind of like the nature of the, the jungle. You might have thought the sun. In fact, I'm about to mention that. You may have gone with the sun because many Hylic do worship the sun. But not the Ito and not the New Hawk. Question eight. How many ranger pets exist in the game? This is an interesting question, actually, because you've got to think about underwater ones and terrestrial ones. So the number's actually much bigger than you may expect, especially considering we've got some new ones with Heart of Thorns. The answer to that is 50. There are 50 new Ranger Pets. That was option four. Question nine. Which of these is not a type of trait? This was probably, in my opinion, the most tricksy one in the normal section. Was it Master, Major, Adept, or Novice? Well, here's the way the traits work. You've got minor traits, which you do not select. These are the ones that appear like on every other uh, rung of your specialization. You've got major traits, which you do select, one of three. And then they tier up between adept, master, and grandmaster. So the only term that doesn't apply to traits at all is novice. For what it's worth, novices are in the game. They are the mobs you fight in the cliffside fractal. And yeah, and yes, I said 50, 50, 50 ranger pets now that we add the new ones. That's what, that's what I meant. Option four. And then last of all, uh, Guild Wars 2 runs on what? Well, many of us should know the answer to this. It's DirectX 9. Outdated. We're looking for an update at some point. Just going to say. So that was option one. All right, those are the normal questions. Rolling straight into the heart. The hard ones were worth, again, double. All right, how are we doing, guys? How are we doing before we get into the hard answers? Yes, the question didn't say new pet. There weren't 50 new pets. It's fine. There's 50 pets total. How how do you do for that, guys? 6 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 5 out of 10? It's all right. It's all right. You're still going on. If you get really good on these next ones, you still get up into the top tiers. 10 out of 10, Kappa. 10 out of 10. All right. All right. All right. I like it. So far, so good for some of you. All right. Moving on to the hard. This is where we separate the men from the boys. Let's do it. Four points for everyone you get correct here. And let's hope you got a few. So what was the name of your father as a char? For those of you who played as char, you probably know this. The only correct answer here is option two, Argus Fool Killer. These are all char NPCs for what it's worth. But Argus, he was your old dad. Number two, what strength statistically are your PvP weapons equivalent to? Now, you might think level 80 exotics. That works, right? You might even think level 80 rares. That also works. We're well familiar that our PvP weapons do less damage than in PvE. Ascended, you could even think, because uh, why wouldn't they want to standardize the numbers? But actually, the answer is none of those. It's level 78 exotics. Bizarre, I know, but true. Yeah, uh, I guess uh, probably a lot of you guessed on this one. I didn't like this one very much, because it's like, how do you hide? It seems so weird that it has to be the answer. But who knows? But yeah, it's actually set level 78 exotics. The weapons may say on them all oh, requires level 80, but their strength is level 78 exotics. Moving on, question three. Which of these is not a Guild Wars 2 damage type? 
This probably threw a few of you through a loop. We don't really have damage types in Guild Wars 2. This isn't Guild Wars 1 where you had, uh, you know, different types of elemental damage and chaos damage and dark damage and so on. But it is a question. It is applicable. F physical, fire, choking, or slashing. Well, the biggest outlier there probably looks like choking, right? But that's not true. There are damage types in Guild Wars 2. All these things do is affect the animation that plays when you kill something. So, if you kill someone with a fire damage attack, then they burn to death at the very end. Uh, if you craft yourself the legendary weapon Incinerator, whenever you score a kill with the Incinerator, it will burn people to death because it changes all your skills to have that fire property. So, this is what we're talking about, and there is no slashing. Slashing is the correct answer here. Choking seems like an outlier, but if you kill someone with a poison attack, then they play the choking animation. Boom. All you lot typing choking as if it was easy. Choking is correct. It is, it is a damage type. Slashing was the wrong one. Uh, and specifically as well. Uh, so Casey just said this is retarded. This is death animation. Uh, actually, if you crafted... I don't know whether the UI still shows it. Maybe they, maybe they patched it. But for a long time, and I'm talking like a period of like two years... Uh, if you mouse over your incinerator on the tooltip, it would say that it would have like the damage range 911 to whatever, right? But it actually would it wouldn't just say damage. It would say fire damage Like no word of a lie would say there. it would say fire damage, etc, etc, etc. It is a, a natural mechanic in the game damage types So question four which character of the devs often joke that they use for size comparison Some of you may have found this very easy But only if you're very in tune with the community and you listen to the devs a lot some obvious answers here may be you know Esther Galkin, right? She's a huge character. What about timey timey is on the other end of the scale. She's very small What about Logan? I mean, he's kind of your average dude, but then so is Lady Kazmir But then La Lady Kazmir is only a new character if they've always been using a character for size comparison Surely they'll be using a character since launch for Logan well, no. The correct answer is Lady Kazmir, and there's even a joke in game about her uh, being sad that she's being used as a unit of measurement. Next question: What happened to your sister as a human? Your sister's only a character that you meet if you do a very specific branch as a human, but she does exist in the story. And what happens after that story arc? Does she just stay in the home instance? Does she die as a part of the story? Does she go missing? Makes sense for her to go missing, right? Just a plot dropped and abandoned. Well, no. Actually, the correct answer is option one. She joins the vigil. And she actually does a lot of stuff beyond then. How much does Garm weigh? Uh, now, this is kind of a weird question. It's like, wait, we have specific information about how much Garm weighs. We do indeed. It's option four, 280 pounds. Garm is a dire wolf. He may, you may just think of him as a regular wolf when stood next to air. But air is a norn and also huge. Garm weighs 280 pounds. Jesus. Uh, now, specifically where that comes from is Edge of Destiny right near the start of the book. Uh, the, um, original description of Garm from J. Robert King, uh, explicitly mentions his weight as 280 pounds. Question seven, which weapon type has the most skins associated with it? Uh, the answer to this is actually option one, focus. As much as we love greatswords, focuses have the most types of skins, even though they're fairly small, unassuming weapons in the grand scheme of things. Yep, okay, so a lot of you guys there saying great sword. Nope. Great sword, absolutely not. It's focus. Focus is the most. And I actually do a cheeky thing here, and I'll show you it soon enough. Yes, it's very, very, very heavy for those of you who don't understand. Focus has the most skins in the game. But yeah. As much as we love great swords, focuses have the most types of skins, even though they're fairly small, unassuming weapons in the grand scheme of things. Question eight. What color? Uh, focus is no, not most look similar. Actually, focuses are, uh, they've got like book focus foci. They've got all manner of crazy different kinds of foci. There are more focus skins. It might have changed with Heart of Thorns, but I don't think it should have. Cause, well, no, Heart of Thorns didn't add a great sword or focus yet, so it should be okay. It should be the same. They should have increased uniformly. Does the magic find bar change to you when you max it out? That's an interesting question. If for what it's worth, what color is it by default? You'd have to ask yourself when answering this question. The correct answer here is green. It starts by default at yellow. When you max it out, it turns green. That's option two. Question nine. In which dungeon does Zodja appear without her headdress on? Damn, that's a specific piece of information. Well, 
Uh, the options we have, Zodja does appear in all of these dungeons. But the only one where she doesn't have a headdress is Corticus's Manor. Again, it seems to be one that you might not expect. As Corticus's Manor, they're all dressed up for a dinner party. But no, it's in a cutscene right at the start of Corticus's Manor story mode that you see Zodja looking bald as the day she was born. She looks really weird when she's bald, by the way. The question 10. The Chinese release date for Heart of Thorns was when exactly? Now, you might have wanted to say October 23rd. October 23rd was when it was releasing for us. Well, what about just a little bit later, maybe November 1st? Maybe it's not out at all. The correct answer is actually option three. It released on November 20th, just a few days ago, actually, of the uploading of this video. Yeah, lots of you guys saying it's not out yet. November 20th was the date. Okay, and last of all... On Wait, but somebody said in chat that they could confirm it, was, it wasn't out yet. Uh, but googling it, I don't see that. I heard November 20th. So, November 20th is, is why it is. Let's see if anybody dissents in chat. I'm 99% sure she was bald in a raw. Really? Why? Find me the screenshot. Alright. Uh, so yeah, that's the end of that section, guys. Yeah, November 20th, it's correct. That's the end of that section there, guys. How are you doing? Four out of tens? Anyone else? I'm starting to doubt on the research for this quiz, WP. Yeah, you should be. Zero out of ten. One out of ten. Eight? Wasn't there a bug where the head just didn't appear? Also, get Shrek. Sorry, what? November 20th? Yeah, November 20th. Eight, nine, ten out of ten. Getting bad, 6 out of 10, 30 out of 30. Alright, well, well, we shall see. ...to the ultra hard, the meanest questions I could come up with over the past couple of months. Let's do it. Question 1. Which of these was not considered... Wait, Casey just gave me a link. Guild Wars 2 launches in China May 15th. That's the regular launch. We're talking about Heart of Thorns, you moron. Are you crazy? Jesus Christ. You just held the entire stream up for that. All right, let's go on. Let's go ahead. All right, which of these is blah, blah, blah. Potential alliance for Scarlet Briar. Wow, well, where do you even start with this? The only way to get the answer to this question is to visit Scarlet's secret lab beneath the Dermond Priory, which is still in game, by the way, despite being added Living World Season 1. If you never played Living World Season 1, you almost definitely don't know about this answer. And even if you did play, you've probably forgotten or had no idea existed. But in Scarlet's secret lair is a hidden piece of paper, which she'd drawn on, pairing up various races. And many of the lines she eventually scribbles out after she considers them, she decides they're not worthwhile. And she comes to the alliances we came to know about. But she did consider, for a time, the Lagos and the Tengu. She did consider the Kodan and the Lagos. She did consider the Centaurs and the Hylic. The only group she never considered in the first place were the Etins and the Inquest. Option four was the correct answer to this question. Ooh, there you go. And I wanted to have in the video the uh, actual pictures for everybody to see because it's really cool. But uh, I was rushing to edit while the Cantha stuff was going on in the pre-show, so I never did in the end. <laughs> I only went ham on KC because I know him quite well. <laughs> All right, here we go. Question two. Which weapon type has the least amount of skins in the game? This one's actually a lot harder and uh, less clear than what... Okay, Lebby123 said, I was right, there was a bug and Zodja's headdress didn't appear in the Arad dungeons. Just type Guild or Zodja bold and you'll see under images. Um, Is it a bug when it appears in Corticus Mana too? Because that sounds kind of weird. If it's a bug in Ara, why wouldn't it be a bug in Corticus Manor? In which case, the whole question's a little bit flawed. But yeah, we'll see. I don't know. All right, moving on. Yeah, yeah. Has the most skins? The answer is option one, tridents. There are less tridents than there are other underwater weapons, such as the spear gun, and even weird above-ground weapons that you might not think have that many skins, such as the focus and torch. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I did something cheeky here. We have focus. So people who answered focus correctly before might second guess themselves when they get here and be like, hold on, what? But focus is an option here. It's kind of cool. And actually, when this came up on Twitch, people were saying focus for the weapon with the least amount of skins. Focus has the most. Pretty cool. Question three. Balthazar's hounds are known as what? So the god has two hounds, and uh, you can even call to them when you summon them as a human. But what are their real names in lore? All of these names that I've listed here actually do belong to characters, but all of them are associated with char names, except option three, Tamar and Tagen. That is what Balthazar's hounds are called. Question four. Where do you encounter Gravespawn Grubs? Gravespawn Grubs. Now, Gravespawn Grubs only appear in one part of the personal story in the entire game. They are not mobs that you will see anywhere else. You may have thought Gendaran Fields because of, like, the crypt area to the north. Unfortunately, you'd be wrong. You might have thought about Aral Story Mode or Straits of Devastation because, look, they're very undead heavy places. But the only place that you find them is in the Temple of the Forgotten God. They are mobs that are spawned in the boss fight at the end of that story instance. A similar question comes up next. Question 5. Which of these doesn't actually exist in Guild Wars 2? Uh, is it the Giant Chief, the Lesser Bladed Attack, or Ache? I can't remember how to pronounce it. The Greater One, or a Sandworm? Actually, the only one that doesn't exist is the Greater Bladed Attack. The uh, lesser ones appear in a personal story instance. The giant chiefs appear in personal story instances. Sandworms appear on South Sun Cove. And so the Greater is the only one that exists. It's kind of weird that they have a great... Wait, I think I just detected a mistake in this. With, with Only with my commentary. Only with my commentary. Hold on. Which I'd have to edit. Oh, man, which I'd have to re redo, I think. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I said... Alright, Lesser Bladed Achak Ache is the one. And then I'm pretty sure just there, I just said... Let's replay. I think I just said Bladed exists. Hold on. Tak or Ache. I can't remember how to pronounce it. The Greater One or a Sandworm. Actually, the only one that doesn't exist is the Greater Bladed Attack. The uh, lesser ones appear in a personal story. Oh, no, no, no. This is correct because we're saying which one doesn't exist. So they all exist except great. Okay, it's good. Giant chiefs appear in personal story instances. Sandworms appear on South Sun Cove. And so the greater is the only one that exists. It's kind of weird that they have a greater one in there. And it Oh, no, there is a slip. I say, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to say is the only one that doesn't exist. And then I miss, I, I miss a word. No, it's true. I'll leave it in there, though. It's fine. In fact, there's no such thing as a bladed AK at all either. No such thing. Uh, but there's a greater bladed one that appears from Priestess Re in one of the human story steps. Question six. This is a big lore question. The Jaws of Oblivion is also known as what? Have you ever heard of the Jaws of Oblivion? Well, yeah, our options were Hrangma, the Slaven Pitch, Bula Crossing on the Maelstrom's Core. All of these are locations or points of interest. It's actually Hrangma. Krangma is the volcano where the Char originally found the Titans and is now the location of... The Citadel of Flame. That volcano you go to where the Flame Legion are hanging out? That's Mount Prangma. Question seven. Which of these is not a skill? Buoy or boy, as we say in England. Water fist. Death curse. Or conceal the depths. Now... All right, all right. People are confused. The, 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 what, the other question was, which enemy doesn't exist, okay? And the greater one doesn't exist. So the correct answer is the greater one. Option three, which is what I say in the, in the track. It's it's three. Lesser, uh, lesser does exist, making it the wrong answer. Hopefully that's clear to everyone. All right, so wait, which skill? You might have noticed that these are all underwater abilities. How many of you know all the names of all the underwater downstate skills in the game? Well, the only one that is not real is Conceal the Depths. Now, Guardian gets Reveal the Depths, but Conceal the Depths, though it may have sounded like it was a Thief ability, is not actually a Thief ability. So the correct answer here is Conceal the Depths number four. Uh, for what it's worth, Death Curse doesn't sound like a real skill either, but it's actually an underwater downstate Necromancer skill. So it's a Necromancer Drowning ability. Death Curse. Question eight. The Orion Fire Eater is most similar to a what? Orion Fire Eater. A gargoyle, a drake, an abomination, or a risen knight. 
Well, uh, you may have gone with, say, Abomination or Risen Knight. The answer here actually is Drake. This is the rarest creature in the game. It is a single mob that only appears with a specific unique character model and name and everything in a single mission to do with the pact right towards the end of the game in awe. And it looks most similar to a Risen Drake, just connected to this weird fiery stuff. Next, question nine is which of these was not a packed vessel to crash over Vernon Brink? Thunderbreak, Farron's Flyer, Plains of Guggleheim, Whitebrez, Pride. Well, you should recognize all of these. They're all ships that were crashed over Vernon Brink, except I was a little bit mean here. It's actually the Thunderbreaker, not just Thunderbreak. So it's option one. And lastly, I tried to think what is the meanest thing you could ask someone. Identify the odd one out. Extraction complete. Memories in your hand. Please follow me to the exit or Bat Wrangler. The odd one out here is Bat Wrangler. Now, you may have just guessed that, but the reason it's Bat Wrangler is because all three of those other achievements all belong to the retired achievements section where the attack on LA was going on. Bat Wrangler is a new achievement that was only recently added with Heart of Thoughts. So that's why it's the odd one out. And there you go, guys. Add all of that stuff up. The ultra hard questions were worth six. You could have had a total of 130 points. Again, if you got 0 to 40, you are a novice. 41 to 60, you're a veteran. 61 to 80, you're elite. 81 to 100, you're champion. And 101 to 120, you are legendary. Finally, the best of the best. Get 121 to 130, you're Traherne. Let me know what uh, tripped you up. If you dispute any of these answers, I'd love to hear it. Thanks very much for playing Mastermind today, guys. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. All right, there you go, guys. That's Mastermind. Let's see your scores. Let's see your results. And we'll call it there. I don't want to be a Traherne. Yeah, I'll probably edit that bit about the uh, lesser graded FK. Because it does, um, it, does, uh, it does confuse the answer. And I'll just have a million comments about that. And it'll make it an unfun video to put up. 68 Elite. 187. Do you guys want to you wanna see the ranking again? Recently you added maths. with Harder Thoughts. 130 points. There you go. That's your rankings. 38, and I've been playing since launch. Anyone less than me is a noob. Anyone higher is a nerd. Boom. Yeah, that's exactly right. Still novice after three years. F this. There's only one champ, and his name is John Cena. Only 90. Well, 90 is good. 90 puts you in champion range. You can kind of ignore Traherne. For the question about your human sister, please specify if you mean before or after we rescue her. Well, well how is it phrased, the question? The question isn't phrased that ambiguously. Let's look for it, shall we? It's uh it's a medium question, isn't it? Name of your father. What happened to your sister, there it is. What happened to your sister as a human? Oh my god, we we clicked the wrong way there. Blah blah blah. What hap what happened to your sister as a human? Oh, yeah, went missing doesn't work. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Because you could say what happened to your sister as a human, like, at the start of the game, and you could say went missing. You're right, this is this should be reworded. Zegheart says all these questions are phrased ambiguously. No, they're not. Yes, actually, Epic is after legendary rank, Zegheart. You're, you're actually correct. Epic does mechanically come after... Epic bosses are like very specific, like fire elementals and epic boss. But yeah. All right, well, there you go, guys. That's the stream for today. To those 500 of you who have played the quiz here, I'd very much appreciate it if you at least watch it on YouTube as well. Otherwise, it's going to feel useless to have done. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, it's been fun as always. Uh, I will see you on Friday for the next stream. Hope you all are having a wonderful evening. I'll see you next time. Bye.